What up, everybody, and welcome to Creeps of the Crypt. I'm your host, John, along with my co-host. Arthur Allen. Welcome back, guys. Yeah, and we're here to talk about uh, next the new... Well, let me, let me cut this part out right here for a second. Let me get to the... Let me address the elephant in the room here. So we fucking started recording, and we were about a good 10, 12 minutes. This happened twice to me already. I'm starting to get nervous, and I'm thinking I might have to go check with my doctor if I have dementia. But this yeah, this happened... Nervous. This happened, I was trying to do a live reaction first time watching video, and the same shit happened. So we started recording. I mean, we didn't start recording. We started, we started the podcast, and I forgot to press record. So we went through a lot of this shit already, and we're going to have to go through it again. But it's a little bit okay because I managed to find something interesting that I about this episode. Because this episode is not that great. But um, yeah, so we're here to... We're, this is episode 15 of Creeps of the Crypt. And we're here to review episode, what is this, episode eight? Episode nine of season two, the four-sided triangle. Yes, the four-sided triangle, which was directed by Tom Holland. It was uh, written by Tom Holland and James Hugend. And uh, it was released on May 29th, 1990. It stars Patricia Arquette as Mary Jo, Cecil Ross as George, and I've seen Cecil in a lot of things. There's one, I think he's, yeah, Bill and Ted, right? He's the army recruiter. He's been in a lot of different things yeah. uh, in his time. Um, yeah, he was in the Bill and Ted movie. He was Captain Oates, I think it was. Yes. One of the one of the Bill and Ted's. The bogus. I know him from yeah. um, Richie Rich. He was in Richie Rich. Oh, I don't he remember was, him uh, in Richie Rich. He, he was lawyer? a security guy. That, oh. He was a security guy that was in cahoots with uh, John Larroquette to uh, try to steal the Richie Rich's parents' money. Mm. No spoilers, I know, it came out. Yeah, I know. Like something, but uh... <laughs> I forgot what I think it's Major League that I remember him the most from, but I remember something else where he had like something in his teeth. He always looked, but well, kind of like this. He he has an interesting look. But he's been working. He's still working. So that is that. Yeah. And also stars Susan J. Bloom Bloomier Bloom Bloom. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but uh, I think that last name is probably like, like I said earlier, she's probably from Louisiana. Or somewhere around, because it sounds like a French Nolans Creole type no, name see. or something. I don't know. Probably, yeah. She's been in a, in a fair share of things, too. I know she was in, uh, I didn't know it until I checked it, but I, it checks out. She was one of those, like, um, housewives from the Edward Scissorhands. Oh. They were trying to, trying to get up on uh, Jenny Depp. I, I remember, oh, yeah, I remember her from, uh, oh, I said earlier, Pet Cemetery. <laughs> I remember her from Pet mm-hmm. Cemetery when she was, an irrelevant character in the movie, kind of, who uh, killed herself because she had um, some back, like she had cancer, I think. And uh, that was what she was having pain with all the time. And uh, she was irrelevant. Probably the story was more relevant, but you know, in this, in that movie, it wasn't, it was like unnecessary. Unless it elevates um, Tasha Yar to fucking talk about her sister. Maybe that's, you know, motivated her to talk about her sister, probably, uh, who had a, I forgot some sort of back disease too. So, uh, which they, they actually cast up. Anyway, that's a that's a good movie. The reason why we're jumping right into this, besides that, is because this episode is very short, and you got to try to find something interesting in the episode itself. But let, why don't you tell us what is this episode about? Yeah, so the uh, episode stars those um, those main players you had mentioned, and then Patricia Arquette. Um, yeah, she plays like this, uh, like this runaway young girl that gets us living with on the farm with these two, um, these two that are married uh, that are running the farm. Uh, apparently, yeah, we'll find that later in the episode. We can get into it, or unless you want me to uh, detail what what might have been what might have been going on no, there. No, no, yeah, she's, yeah. she's kind of under their care, and they're watching over her, and just just doing a lot of the the service work for them, and at the same time. You know, George Yates uh, is the character that one of the farmers there is just, um, yeah, lusting for the Patricia Arquette's character the whole episode and, mm-hmm. you know, trying to find ways to kind of to get at her uh, without the wife knowing. So that's kind of the, uh, the setup of the episode. But, that's what, yeah, basically what it is. She's just, yeah, she's, she, what we don't know, what we get, we gather is that they kidnapped this bitch. Like she was a runaway, probably like, she was probably like, you know, um, hitchhiking and either her or him were driving i would assume him 
because of her leg, because uh, uh, Louisa is her name, or Louise, Louise, whatever, she has like a brace in her leg. Which, uh, she, that's why she needs uh, help around the house, technically, I guess. But it doesn't necessarily seem like that's what's causing her, that she needs the help. She's just lazy. So, uh, and then the husband's like, a, like he works on his car, they got a farm, but it's just the two of them, like they don't have any kids, maybe she can't have kids. So these are all these things that they could have hit out, like talked about or mentioned, you know, like uh, sure. exposition, you know, somewhere along there. But there's barely any communication between the wife and and uh, George. It's more so just like she, you're just getting the sense like she wakes up, she uh, and she's like, "Where's my fucking coffee?" Right? And she doesn't have her coffee. And then she runs into this room, and starts beating the shit out of these blankets, and you start hearing Patricia Arquette scream, and she jumps out, and you see Patricia Arquette wearing. What you're going to see her wear through this entire episode, white shirts. That's all she wears throughout this entire... Yeah, white tank top. White tank, white tank top. top yeah. No bra. You can see her no bra. nipples. White sweater. Yeah. No bra. You can see her nipples. Uh, later on, see-through white shirt. You can see her nipples. Pretty much see-through blouse. I mean, see-through white blouse. A lot of uh, cleavage, yeah. Yes. Uh, a lot of see-through. I mean, I'm surprised that they must have not really focused because I... I was looking at one particular moment, which is coming <laughs> up. So, but I want to say, yeah. Tom Holland, he, you told me that he directed, I mean, you reminded me, that he directed Lover Come Hack to Me. Another yeah, episode. Yeah, he directed that one, and then another mm -hmm. one coming up later on. It's uh, another episode starring Brad Pitt in the next season. So he's directed three mm. episodes of Tales from the Crypt, including this one. Yeah, that one with Brad Pitt, I said, I, did, I, don't, rep I don't remember anything. Is there a woman in there? Because it seems like... I mean, I know Tom there's, Holland. There's a, yeah, there's a chick in there. Oh. there. I mean, it's not a, not the most uh, in exciting episode. Much like this one, just uh, just things yeah. that are there and not much know. else. It's not. A, it's funny. Not a cool setup. Not a cool premise. Nothing really like that. I I, I really like Lover Come Lover Come Hack to Me, and this one. Yeah, it's great. I'm trying. I was trying to like it, right? I'm like, let me find something in here, and it's just like. The only there's, thing you could like there that I you could know. expand upon. It could have. I think, uh, yeah, I think when you look at it, if, you know, once we kind of summarize and go over some of the stuff that happens, there's definitely things there that I think inspired uh, what we I talked about with last time when I saw it the first time uh, a few months back, and then uh, rewatched it again today. Uh, definitely elements of this that I think I can't see it being a coincidence that that, that was taken and used in Pearl. Uh, oh, that movie, uh, that yeah. horror movie that was uh, pretty pretty uh, popular for a little while, you know, just because it was something new. But there's Pearl nothing. in the next. Well, the only thing is in there, but this, the, but necessarily, yet yeah, no, necessarily, well, kind of, yes and no. Because I'll tell you why at the end. I'll tell you why at the end. I don't yeah. think, because I mean, just the idea maybe, yes. But like what I was saying earlier, it was like, I feel like, because I don't have the document, the DVD anymore, so I don't know this. But like they were fans of of, uh, you know, these comic books as a kid, you know, Zemeckis and Gay and um, and uh, Hill and Donner, they were fans of these comics. And then they would hire people, to, and then like, they, but they wanted to do this, they decided to do it, they got the rights to do it, and then they basically got all the comics, and they were like, oh, you remember this one, you remember this one, or if, uh, people that didn't know these comics didn't, weren't, didn't have these as reference as a kid, but they wanted to work with these directors, they would, they get to choose from these comics which one they wanted to do. And then when you look at it, I could see, when I look at the comic, I looked it up. This is from Shock Suspense Stories, number 17, volume 17. You see it and you go, if I was a kid and I was at a comic shop, I would have picked this up. And this probably would have been my favorite because this cover is badass. Yeah, the, the official cover for the story, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool compared to the uh, the one they used for the, the show. But yeah, they, you know, they emulate it. But this one, this one actually looks pretty cool. Came out in... 54 so this story was is it's got some age to it so it makes a lot of more sense i know oh it would have been how much of the show is inspired by these comics but yeah it's more and more so as we go along there's <laughs> definitely a lot of real issues from these comics can, that they end up just adapting can i read you the they made it different in this in the show i saw this on the first side this year. a farmer I saw it to uh Everything I'm gonna read it. Pretty spot on. Besides that part, I'm gonna read it. Though. I'm gonna read it. A <laughs> farmer tries to take advantage of a retarded girl. He keeps to, he keeps to work on the farm as a servant. She tells him that she's got a boyfriend that she's sees 
<laughs> and this this makes more sense because you look at uh this okay so this is good in this episode right so okay that makes more sense so in this episode as we stated george is he's got a hard on for it, <clears throat> which makes sense see this is the thing that's interesting about this episode the more you think about it is that i was complaining earlier like or that there was no there's no sense of what's hap- what what happened with these two like how they got her right like i said i believe she was hitchhiking and he picked her up or she picked her up probably she was there together probably and she well, at t- some point she- in the episode he does mention something that it kind of explains why she's there oh, I, I, I don't know if you caught it, it but no. when they were having an argument in the dinner table yeah they were he, he was talking about how um, he was driving by like this gas station that, and then the owner was yelling that you know somebody was stealing something. Oh. So she was she was there, so she kind of he kind of took her along and, and saved her from I guess getting arrested or whatever by, by the owner that was uh, saying she stole something. So that's oh. kind of partly blackmail. They're keeping her um, around just as a servant. And oh, I missed you know, that part. What's going on? I was yeah, yeah, that was like probably just was, staring like, at her nipples. <laughs> they're, they're pretty uh, hard. Yeah, they're pretty hard throughout the whole episode. <laughs> yeah, I, it, might I, been, it might have been cold on. Sunday. I was wondering. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I was wondering. I'm like, <laughs> I go, how did they do this? Did they, do they like get like say okay, they have a girl or something or tell her Patricia Arquette. They say, hey, listen, take some fucking because uh, it's the it's the fucking like what is, I don't know where this is. It looks like it's I don't know. It's probably north Northern California. It's made to look like. Uh, somewhere else because it looks like a desert the ground doesn't look like good soil first of all that their farmers at right so there's a lot of things there so i didn't know that part that that's how he picked her up but i thought he did just picked her up as a hitchhiker but then that makes more sense that she was uh stealing something yeah, but she really, was a runaway yeah we didn't really get to know it until 10 minutes in the episode yeah but uh, then again i was just looking because her, she's like i got a man anyway so uh but the, the context, like, she wakes up, um, Louise, or whatever her name is, she gets pissed, so we know she's got a servant, but there's no relation, like, we don't know the relationship between her and George, besides that they're husband and wife. But, like, why is, why do they have this girl? Why is she doing it? Besides the fact that you could tell she's a runaway, why is she doing all these things? And the only way you know anything is, like, after she rushes out and she leaves to go do, pick the eggs, Right. She looks at George, who's working on something, and she's looking at that, at his necklace, because he has the key. So you know she's being held there against her will, and these aren't her family. That's the one thing we do get out of that, because it's not, it's not being told to us. We're being shown these things. So that's kind of interesting in that regard, as a storytelling device. Yeah, it's something you got to pay attention to. Yeah. Uh, if you miss some of those things, you, know, you might be a little lost as to what's going on in the beginning, and not up until, I guess, near, near the end, where... It somewhat kind of ties up a little bit of everything that you were unsure of in the beginning. And I think, uh, but yeah, I think that from the sense of watching the episode, that she can't have kids, so they never had kids. That that was the reason why they never had kids because she couldn't have them. It's not said I don't ever that she can't have kids, but at the same sense, you go, well, then what happened? There's no pictures. They don't talk about it. the house looks disheveled. This 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 house reminded me of. Was this like the original origin story of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? You know, like this is the the wife, and that's gonna be the old man that's gonna be hunting for uh, for cannibals and shit because they're not gonna have food. Very poor, they have nothing but chickens on that thing and cow, a cow somewhere, because she goes go milk the cow later on. But anyway, she goes yeah, out like to one, it's like one cow there, and then like yeah. one chi- oh, we only ever see like one chicken, so <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and yeah, she she goes to do that, and then yeah. just uh, kind of peeking from the from from the outside looking in, and uh, mm-hmm. you just get a lot of shots of Patricia Arquette's cleavage and him looking all all uh, aroused and, moan, and moaning uh, as you see all these shots of her uh, bending down. You see uh, the cleavage. God bless Tom Holland. I would say God he bless did. Tom Holland. He directed you know a scene. He put the right shirt. He's like, it's got to be baggy. <laughs> it's a tank top, but, it's, but just when you bend down, for some reason, it gets real loose. <laughs> like, it's like earlier, it's pretty tight because we want to, you know, show it tight and you can see everything. But then once you're in the barn, it all becomes a loose shirt out of nowhere. So things are hanging all over the place, literally hanging. She bends down. And I'm trying to pause. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, come on. 
Come on, you you showed me Amanda Plummer's nipple for like a millisecond. I had to go back after I watched the the after we did the podcast. I went back to look and I saw it. But this one, nipples everywhere, nipples everywhere, but not shown technically. I mean, it's shown, but you know, not without the shirt. Uh, let me tell you. Let me ask you: Were you ever a Patricia Arquette guy? I know she was pretty. Uh... I guess considered somewhat of a sex symbol at the time, right? No, or, never. I guess in the, some of the roles that she was in, right? Or well, it always seemed that way. Whenever I go back and watch some of the stuff she was in, maybe in, uh, maybe I thought True she was attractive in True then, Romance. Um, yeah. And then the other movie she did with Bill Pullman, the David Lynch movie. Uh, I forgot what it was called. Um, not Mulholland Drive, but Lost Highway. I every time I try to watch a David Lynch film, I just end up going, "What the fuck is going on?" David Lynch is just one of these guys that I don't get it. Everyone loves him. <laughs> you know, I mean, I tried Mulholland Drive to watch so many times because I heard it's like one of the best films ever made. And every fucking time I fall asleep. Lost Highway, I try to watch too. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Maybe it's just me. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm going to try again. I'm really going to try it. I'm going to sit no, back. It's an, acquired, it's an acquired taste. I would say uh, Mulholland Drive is his most mainstream movie. At least though, it's one that... In, for the most part, you know, it's not as confusing as uh, the other ones. You can kind of understand it once you watch it and put, put pieces together. Oh, the the, highway is a little bit more confusing and takes a little bit. I love you gotta, Eraserhead. Well, you gotta watch it more than hit more than once to kind of get it. Yeah, right. Eraserhead was was pretty cool too. I, not one of my favorites from his, but yes, yeah, we could tell. I mean, that's his first uh, movie he made. I guess prior to him started doing more. Uh, you know more projects after that it's kind of like a more of a passion project or student film kind of deal yeah well so but yeah i've never been a patricia arquette guy i think it's that gap tooth and uh no never did it for me her gap i don't think it's i don't even she got a gap tooth i was looking at her nipples the entire episode i forgot <laughs> all about her fucking teeth i was like what the i mean it's the small things that that always uh will turn me off well, so in this episode, the small things that would turn me on. <laughs> that was the, the two nipples and the fucking... I'm sorry, I'm a man. At the end of the day, that's what... I think that's what Tom Holland was like. Hey, you know what? This episode sucks. We gotta do something. Maybe. You gotta give him something. Because yeah. we didn't get Terry Hatcher nude at all. We didn't get yeah. the other chick from the last one nude. And he's like... So oh, and you had to do, do something for us here. Show it, us some skin. He's like, and you're, playing, you're supposed to be a retarded woman. <laughs> But, that's the funny part, because uh, I guess that's the the, the that's the, the side they took with the with the comic. But in, in this episode, I it kind of seemed like that as well, mm -hmm. but it kind of it kind of isn't. Uh, we'll get into it, but base you know once uh, no, you know, she started it's... milking the, the the cow and eggs and everything. You know he he tries to take advantage mm -hmm. of her and. Rape her. And pretty much, yeah, rape her pretty much. Mm. And they have this fight in the in the farm, and he you know, knocks her out with the bottle, and, you know, she's passed out, and then the, the wife comes comes to see what the commotion was about because she heard screams. Oh, by the way, I think, uh, I was like, when I saw her, after he hit her in the bottle and she fell, I was like, mm. oh, she definitely got blood in her eye because that blood was literally dripping down her, her eyelid, right? Like in between both eyelids, you know, top and bottom. And I was like, yeah, that definitely got oh, in, right. and that probably burned the shit out of her. And I was like... <laughs> yeah, whatever they use for yeah, back, blood. Yeah, yeah back then, it yeah. Went, it went right in the eye, yeah. Yeah. I see it. So uh, then after after that, Tugend. That's James Tugend. So after that, he takes her into the cornfield, and then he puts her there like she... Like she I don't know what he, what, what he was good as. I mean, I'm surprised Louise or whatever didn't say, like, how the fuck did she get here? Who hit her over the head? Like, what's going on, you know? But yeah, you get so a scene dumb. of her. Um, yeah, she like uh, she goes to the scene of what happened, uh, and then and then that yeah, she was she was gone, and then they go looking for her. She goes uh, walking off into the cornfields and and falls in front of a scarecrow. Yes, and then and that's the, when he goes. Uh, he George goes to his wife Louise and to say like, uh, if she says then like whatever, he goes to find her. To, it says I don't know where she is. She might be over there. Right, they're talking. Mm -hmm. So they go looking for her, and as this happens, she wakes up and she looks up. She sees the scarecrow, and that's when the scarecrow looks down at her and reaches out to like grab her. And then she reaches out and she passes out. And she when she uh, she doesn't come to, 
until George and Louisa find her. And then th th Louisa never asks, what the fuck happened to her head? Like, how did this happen? Nothing. Mm -hmm. he, maybe she, maybe he did just pretend like she fell on her, she hit her head on a rock or something. So then, um, hey, what's she gonna <laughs> say, George? <laughs> it's like, don't, don't yes. believe anything she says. <laughs> he goes, don't believe anything she says. You know, she says, you know, and he goes, why? What's she gonna say? And he goes, I don't know, but she hit her head. You know, <laughs> she hit her head. Know. Yeah, <laughs> it just that was the funny part. You know, that, that that was good. And then she wakes up. She goes, give me my man. I where's my man? I want my man. This is probably in the comic book was <laughs> retarded girl, so they made it. She got hit in the yeah, head, and that's when she became retarded. Sick. I guess so. That's what it, we're uh, led to believe. That, that shot in the head changed her. We go to the next scene where uh, I guess they're make, they're getting ready for dinner, and uh, you know he's uh, cleaning up and everything. She's acting like nothing happened really. She just stirring the pot there and then for some reason uh, she's got a hole in her pants near where her butt is mm -hmm. so he starts look you know starts checking that out for a bit like, how, did, how did the hell did her pants rip right i just probably and, uh, changed her pants yeah. their old pants with a rip in them or some shit are these the black pants or are they a different color no uh, they look like the same mm -hmm. she was wearing earlier uh but yeah he, she, he starts flirting with her again and he starts you know, commenting what she smelled like. She was rubbing some honeysuckle flowers on her, and for her man, like you said, you know, <laughs> she's got a a man that likes the how she smells. You ain't got no man, Mary Jo. What are you talking <laughs> you about? You ain't got no man. There ain't no man around here for sixty miles. I do got yeah, a man. So definitely out there. He's he's, he's like handsome and tall. There. He got straw all over. <laughs> <laughs> He got oh, a red a nose <laughs> and freckles, and he paints his mouth with a big old smile. Which, later on, they used for the end, which I thought was interesting. I was like, hmm. This whole thing was written by Tom Holland. Whoever, the, whoever took the story and they gave him, listen, you can write, you know, this story. It could adapt it. Maybe it was a kid. Who know, I don't even know who James Two Gun is. I don't know when he was born. All I know is... Tom uh, Holland he rewrote did most it. Most of the work because he's got the most credit on as a writer. I mean, he wrote uh, the original Child's Play, right? So no, well, he no, no. Dan Mancini wrote the original uh, Child's Play. He just directed it. So I'm pretty sure though, with this, he took it from this guy who wasn't a writer. He has no credits before this or really after. He nothing that came out, just like little shorts or whatever. But anyway, so he tries to assault her again in the kitchen. Like he's like, "You ain't got no man. I'm your man. I'm a man I'm right here." And I got a big dick. <laughs> Nobody knows I got a big dick. <laughs> Just because it don't please my wife, Louise, don't mean it ain't big. They told me it was big. For the record, did you hear that Will Smith is gay all of a sudden? I mean, I've heard the rumors about it, huh. but there's a guy out there now who was his best friend or assistant to him. Said he walked in on, on Will Smith getting fucking piped down. <laughs> I mean... I wouldn't be surprised at this point, just based off of, uh, you know, all the publicity that's been going on with him and his wife. So, I mean, who knows? I, I, I go back uh, to that joke. I didn't hear about that. Yes, it is, it was pretty big news today. Uh, the, the, I go back to this joke that, uh, well, it's not really a joke. Bert Kreischer said that when he was younger <laughs> and he had an option for his Van Wilder, Will Smith was going to make it, and that when he went to... Uh, <laughs> He, Will Smith wanted him to hang out, and then was like, oh, let's go to the movies together. And then Burt Kreischer's dad told him, oh, no, he's going to try to fuck you. <laughs> I guess his, uh, his radar was, like, hey, was going off on the look, this isn't, hill there. It's not, they, it, really, they don't call him Big Will for a reason. <laughs> well, I, that's all another thing, that he's not Big Will. Like, supposedly the guy who's the assistant said that Jade is used to a baby leg, and uh, Will Smith got a, <laughs> a pinky toe. And I was like, bro, that's some fucked up shit. That's his friend, too. <laughs> He's got some shitty friends, man. Yeah, oh. I don't know. It seems like every everything, everybody around him, or even himself, is, uh, yeah, just willing to share whatever. And just, like, I don't know. You think his career is, is kind it's, of been affected at this over. point since the slap, I guess? It's over, yeah. That, that being, she ruined him. He hasn't him. been in much of anything really after that, right? I know he did Emancipation. some kind of slave movie yeah. for Apple, but nobody really talked about it. A bullshit, uh, like there's a lot of 
one that they could have done, but he's terrible. He's like, look, in general, he picks very terrible films. He got lucky with Independence Day and Men in Black. Yeah. He got very lucky that those were two were, especially he didn't want to do Men in Black. Uh, Steven Spielberg had to persuade him to do Men in Black. Okay. And then he didn't do The Matrix. Idiot. He did Wild Wild West instead of The Matrix. <laughs> and look, the guy's got terrible choices. And then he didn't do Django because he wanted to, uh, to be a totally different story. And I, I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think, because I used to think it was, I think I talked to you privately and I said, I think Leo was the one that wrote this whole thing out and sent it to Tarantino and said, like, I want you to change, uh, I want to, you know, I want you to read this and tell me what you think about it. And that he, it was like, he frees her and lets her go and lets her do, uh, you know, and I thought it was Leo. And then after the Killers of the Flower Moon, and then I heard that Leo was heavily involved with changing the direction of the story and it being the way it was. I was like, oh, I knew it was Leo. Now I'm thinking right. it was Will Smith that gave Tarantino the note about changing the script and him freeing her because Smith says it could have been the greatest love story of all time. And he talks about there's a clip of him talking about this and how he wanted to wanted to be a love story. And, and thinking about it, the way Tarantino was talk talking about the Bill Maher, he said that the guy wrote him this and said that he frees her and it's beautiful, it shows real love or whatever. Like he frees her, like he buys her and he frees. I was like. I'm starting to think it was Will Smith that said that note, and then he, he was like, ah, uh, yeah, we're not working together. <laughs> like, this ain't, ain't going to happen. But I don't know. Yeah, more than likely. I wouldn't be surprised. It's uh, crazy to think how uh, how things could change like that. And, uh, you know, when we go see it, we just think that's how it was, face value. But interesting to think uh, what it could have been, the Killers of the Flower Moon had it... You know, if they gone with the original intent of the, yeah, the it was been... supposed to be more of a detective story, yes. right, I guess, and rather what than uh, him involving Leo being a bit more, uh, <clears throat> more of the villain of the movie. He no, he would have been uh, the Jesse Plemons character. That's what he was supposed to be. So he's, he would have been the right. FBI agent. So it would have been focused more yeah. on that. Kind of would have been similar to the Marshall aspect in Shutter Island when he calls as a Marshall, not the whole story of Shutter Island, you know, but. I was assuming. Oh, gotcha. Well, uh, just to go back to the uh, the episode there, mm -hmm. I know, uh, we're just filling some time here, folks. Yeah. So I hope you don't mind because uh, this episode's pretty short. pretty short and not, not much, not much, not much to, to really break down. He's easily explained in like a minute. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so after like uh, you know he tries to put the moves on her and the wife you know walks in on him and you know they keep having the conversation about you know her her uh, you know hoping to had sex with his her man one day and she uh, and the night happens and he starts uh mm -hmm. you know the husband starts dreaming about patricia arquette again and we get these uh nice vintage shots of her and uh, her take again in slow motion bending mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh wait i'm sorry <laughs> put, your pants, put your pants put your pants I, I, i'm watching uh <laughs> I have okay, I clicked on the episode and I'm seeing her in that white blouse right after the scene you're talking about. Okay, I'm pausing it right here. That's beautiful. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm not even gets, a fan he of gets, hers. He gets woken up. I, I, yeah, me and him. No, oh, you were talking about oh George. <laughs> I thought you were talking about, no, I'm yeah, both kidding. Of you guys are up now. All three of us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he goes out into the crop, into the crops, and uh, she sees uh, Fisher Fisher Arquette talking to the. The scarecrow they got there, exactly like you know he described. Mm -hmm. And the the mask is the mask from uh, I don't think it's the well it's a different version of the uh, I know it's a Slipknot mask. There's a guy in Slipknot who played uh, the clown. He was the clown in Slipknot. That's the yeah that's the Halloween mask right from uh, yeah. What was it? The, no, is the resurrection or H no um, uh, the Rob Zombie one. Oh, the Rob Zombie one. Because I remember a mask similar to that. It's one of the guys. Yeah, that's his. That wore it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm. I think that was in in uh, Resurrection. Because that's that after, like, Michael Kills. Oh, right? my God. I don't remember Top Resurrection. I, yeah, oh, yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. That was a similar mask. Like yes, that. yes, yes, yes. That was a nut, too, that wore it. Yes, yes, yes. I guess um, he gave him the knife, I guess, to frame him for killing everybody. Yeah, because he just leaves. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, George goes. George sees uh, 
yes, he's uh, Mary Jo, uh, just pretty much getting all smitten with the, with the scarecrow. So crazy, she doesn't know the difference between that and the real man. <laughs> So he tries to sexually assault her again in the woods, and uh, she gets away from him. And uh, then he goes back home, and his wife catches him. And he's like, "What were you? What were you doing? Like, where were you? I, I wasn't doing. Uh, I just, you know, I thought I heard something or, or something." Heard the critters chasing the chickens. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, that's when we lead up to now, the next morning, when she's walking around in a white blouse. See through yeah, as day, but I have a feeling, yeah, see through, white blouse, yes, see through and you can see everything. Thank you, Tom Holland. Thank you. <laughs> but at the same great sense, lighting. great, beautiful <laughs> lighting. The lighting in this is magnificent. But I will say, it's superb because re watching this now and knowing what happens, which is uh, we could just spoil it. Okay, we're just gonna spoil it. Let's just get to the end because we're procrastinating well, way yeah, too long. Well, so um, he sees her now like this, and then later in the night, because uh, he tried already like three times to, <laughs> to bang yeah. her. Yeah. So, yeah, three times to rape her. But she though. says things like, he's going to wake up one day, and he's going to make love to me. She keeps saying, like, he's going to make love to him. He's going to make love to him, which makes me believe. So at the end, she goes the next night, this night, right? She goes to the woods, and she goes, and she starts, you know, touching him, make love to me, and then... He comes to life and she's like, oh my God. And she starts, you know, fooling around with him. And that's when Luis wakes up and she's that like, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And that's when Luis wakes up and Luis is like, sees her husband's gone. Also, she told him the night before, like, if you cheat on me, you know what they do to dogs, <laughs> you know, like, or the bulls, you know what they, they do, do to bulls? bulls? Yeah. I'm going to do that to you. If He goes, I'm Turn not cheating on you. Steers. Yeah. He goes, I I'm not cheating yeah. on you. She goes, I know. But like, like I know you're not, but you ain't going to. <laughs> you ain't even going to because I will cut your balls off. So she wakes up. She yeah. sees that her husband's gone. She already knows the night before he was trying to fuck this girl. He knows. She knows that he's horny as fuck and there's something wrong with her vagina that can't please him. So she he, she goes and looks for uh, Mary Jo. Mary Jo's gone too because she went to go with her man. So she goes and what she find? well, he hears... Uh, Louisa coming, so he pretends <laughs> he goes back to <laughs> he goes back I to I guess we don't I guess we don't know, but you can make the assumption just based on everything we had seen. Um yeah, he uh, dresses up as a scarecrow and then starts <clears throat> making eye with her th through the mask somehow. And she goes, You're and alive Louisa Yeah. <laughs> She's like, Yeah, you're alive and <clears throat> Louisa comes bar bar barreling through on in the tractor. Mm-hmm. And then he got he goes back up and says, "Oh shit, he's just coming. I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go back up on the pole here and act, and act like a fucking scarecrow." And it was, it was uh, Mary Jo. What are you doing? I'm here. I'm ready. Yeah, okay, don't go. And then she, then she gets on him, like grabbing, mm -hmm. uh, hugging, is hugging his waist with her legs, and uh, yeah, he goes back to sleep. He just pretends to <laughs> he stands still as, as fuck. It's hilarious. As, he, as Louisa comes barreling through. Mm -hmm. The cornfield and the tractor. And they go, you say, where's George? You say, ain't nobody here but my man. Say, ah, get the hell out of here, you stupid fool. <laughs> this ain't real. And then she, she starts stabbing the scarecrow with the pickaxe. Yeah, uh, there ain't no man here. And then she stabs it over and over. And she's like, no. And then he, she sees the blood. George falls down. And then to, he, you could tell he was trying to grab the, well, anyway, he grabbed the mask, falls off. Right? So then, uh, she looks and she's like, oh my God, this was, I like this, this little subtlety, again, subtlety. He had a frown when he died, right? He had a mask that had the smile, right? He was so happy. He thought he was finally getting what he's been dying for, what he was trying to, you know, he wanted to take, like, yeah, the, good, you know, take from her, touch. right? The love, yeah. And then when he dies, his, he's like, oh, there's a frown. And then she even goes <laughs> and she touches and, his mouth till I like, put it back to normal. And then that's when Mary Jo stabs her in the back. All right? And then she dies. And then Mary Jo grabs the keys from her. And then Mary Jo starts singing. Uh, what was it? What's the song? J not Jimmy Crack Corn. Is it Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care? No. It's something like that. I think so. I don't think it's Jimmy Crack Corn. It's like some other it's some other variation. But yeah, that was the, that's about it. It kind of ends with... Um... With her, um, run, yeah, running off with the with the keys of the truck, because uh, uh, that's what the they kept 
chicken uh, pot pie. Cam- camera, pe- camera, pa- yeah, chicken pot pie. And I don't care. Yeah, she says chicken, it's which is last. Jimmy Crack Corn. And I don't care. But I think Jimmy Crack Corn uh, is about slave. Jimmy Crack Corn, and I don't care. Jimmy Crack Corn, because I, I think I always heard, Jimmy, and my master's gone away. My master's gone away. Like, he don't care. He's Jimmy Crack, he's cracking the corn. Cause he don't care because his master went away. I think that's, I don't remember the lyrics, but this one is chicken pot pie, and I don't care. I'm free at last. I believe from that last line, with a certainty, because also the expression, she looks back at her. That she set this and once she saw that her only escape was this key and the fact that he was horny and he wanted her she deliberately wore the shirts that's why she deliberately stopped wearing a bra she wore the see-through blouse she kept saying that the scarecrow was gonna not that she thought he was gonna go pretend to be the scarecrow maybe she did because she went out there to make love to it in this version right? well so, yeah it gave it away when she said she was gonna go see him at yes night. yes that night but, but i think okay. that's I think originally she pl- she maybe she did see this. That was like her idea. Like when she looked up and she saw the scarecrow reach down on her, maybe that was the initial idea for her. Oh, but maybe she maybe she was concussed and she's like, "Where's my man?" She thought he was real at that time, but it wasn't until the second time he tried, the third time he tried to assault her, because once in the barn with the chickens, the chicken coop, once in the chicken coop, once at the at the kitchen table, once in the field again. Um, Right, and then the the four four five times, <laughs> four, four or five times, yeah. Yeah. So the the fourth time, when she tried, when he tried, the next day she wore the see through shirt. I think she that's when she's like, one night he's gonna come to life, and that's like because she, I don't know. I think that's when that Ooh. was this where it was her plan was I'm gonna get him to dress up like this, and then get her to come and like I don't know. I think she set it up. Or, yeah, I think uh, she said yeah, it. Yeah, it's definitely possible because, uh, you know, prior to the ending, um, you were kind of led to believe, yeah, she, mm, uh, she was affected by the, you know, the hit uh-huh. with the bottle. Mm-hmm. But also, it's a little bit different than the the comic because, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they said that she was uh, the car yeah. word, you know. The, but I see. This is the thing with this too. Is like they did it in such a way to stay true somewhat to the comic without making her a ret- a, ret- uh, a, a mentally challenged person. Hold on. This is it. So they did enough to keep true to the original comic without making her mentally challenged. So they just took that one aspect out, but they gave her a concussion. So this way, you can think she's concussed. She doesn't know what's going on. Or she got a blow to the head. And it gives, and it gives the, it gives the uh, George more of a motive to, you know, keep keep trying mm-hmm. to have his way with her because uh, they already discussed what happened with the with his wife, and they, they think that she kind of got a little bit uh, loopy too with that bottle hit apparently. So yeah, yeah. Once it once it all kind of uh, ends and you kind of gather your thoughts. I didn't get this the first time watching it, but the second time, yeah, I'd say that's what what we mentioned before. That's what was great about some of this stuff that was you know made at this time period is like there's definitely subtleties there that you didn't have to be told everything directly um you kind of kind of just gather what you remember of those subtle things like just her her mentioning when he would because so why would she tell why would she tell him that he would she was going to go see this guy uh, this boyfriend of hers um since they, they already had this dynamic where she can't trust this guy is he's always trying to mm-hmm. always trying to this she said it, she was so, setting it up. So at the end, yeah, you kind of get the sense that very, uh, you know, very quick, you know. Uh, also, the key, the, when she saw the key, that he was wearing the key, she knows they wear the key on them. That they're not, they're yeah, not going to put it anywhere. Because she's probably looked for the key. Yeah, she's probably looked for the key several times throughout however long she's been here. She could never find it. Maybe that day was the first time. Again, we're not, no, we don't, they don't tell us much. That's the first time she saw it, right? She's like, oh, they keep it on them, right? So that was her way out. Like, oh, I'm going to get it off him, probably. I mean, technically, though, she could have just finally gave in to him and let him have her way. And then she could have done something, like, had a knife or something in her hand and killed him instead of this whole fucking... So that's the only thing that kind of negates that, you know? Yeah, because... a little bit. Yeah, it's a very... it's a very. Uh, you have to be very lucky for all these events to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and... 
the way that she's been acting the on top of it she could kill them at any time she wants they don't lock her in her room she gets out all the time right she cooks and shit for them she could have killed them any time any time she wanted so she i don't then this is i don't i'm negating on my idea that she knew what she was doing i don't think she knew what she was doing i think she thought this fucking thing maybe he was a savior Right, she thought oh, he's gonna save me. My man's gonna save me. Which at the end of the day, she kind he kind of did. Right, the scarecrow did save her. Cause it made it's, this guy pretend it could to be. Go, it could be. It could go either way. It could be kind of the the irony of it, or it could be she was aware of uh, at least trying to plan something involving him coming 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 again over at night to do to do something. But yeah, it, it's it's hard to hard to say. This is just more of our more of our theories but it, it makes a bit more sense once you put the pieces together i mean there are moments of subtlety that elude at least to the fact that uh, what we know is that yeah she's being held there against her will you know almost blackmailed but it seems a bit more than that mm -hmm. there's just, 60, he mentions they're 60 miles away from anywhere so just to get her to do yeah, that there's shit for her. there's there's definitely hints there i mean they could have been lying too she she maybe doesn't Maybe she thought that was the case, so she never bothered to to run away and see how far she can get. Yeah, but there's also like she she could have gone up. She could just left. Was there a fence she can't climb? Up? You know what I mean? Like there's so many that she could have just every day, every night, gone out and clipped one part of a fence or whatever it is. So right. a lot. That's why I was like, mixed on this. Yeah. A, this the ideas are, are interesting. I uh, I just as it is, it's it's too much trying to come up with conclusions as to. Uh, what, yeah. what it is we saw but i'm gonna say um yeah she was a, a bit aware but, of it it's a it's a bit convoluted that mm -hmm. it ended up happening in those events she got really lucky but most of these are yeah, most of these are, sometimes not, they get a little bit yeah not convoluted. some yeah like it's the same thing like the with uh the was it the sacrifice yes it's like the sacrifice all these things yeah, had to sacrifice. happen in order to kill the husband and go what the fuck? why wouldn't they just like but just look you got to suspend your disbelief these stories were written for kids in the 50s. They were targeted towards kids in the 50s. So they made it short or whatever. I'm not going to hold this adapted concept, you know, to the same standard as, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's look, it's fun. I got it. I got I can't be too, too, uh, this was, a, this was all right. I mean, it wasn't the best episode. It wasn't really the worst episode. I still think um, the thing from the grave is the worst one. This one's pretty, pretty not great, to be honest. Like, and, yeah. but I think uh, I, the problem with the thing from the grave that sucks is that you wasted Miguel Ferrara and Terry Hatcher. Like, that's the, the biggest problem I have with that. Like, you have both of them, you kind of wasted, and you had a terrible actor as a lead. The, maybe it was somewhat cool to see him come back from the dead uh, in that scene, but that doesn't really, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't help the entire episode. You know, it doesn't add anything to it. This one, it's the same thing. It's kind of like there's all this. It's not that great. I, I don't know if I, I don't know what, what would you give because I can't. I'm trying to think between this and the thing from the grave. Which one's actually worse? And I think uh, this uh, one's yeah, better. I'm trying to remember what I what I rated that one. I think this one's better time. for the acting between all three of them. That's the only thing that saves it, and the fact that Tom Holland knew that this episode kind of sucked. So he had, there's no other explanation for the having Patricia Arquette no, where nothing but see through, unless that he was telling her, like maybe that's the idea was that she is the, she didn't mastermind the escape, but you know, for the, whatever story he had, you know what I mean? Like he had this little crappy story. So he managed to make it like, and convince her like, no, you're using your sex appeal to escape. Like, you know, you want him to do this because you want to get out. You know that you even if you were to try to hurt him, right? Even if you try to hurt him or something like that, when you when he was on on top of you, because she probably said, "Well, what what if I let him, uh, you know, seduce like uh, have his way with me, and I stab him or something, and I take the key, right?" Well, it's like, well, you're not sure she that she he has the key on him, right? Number one, and number two, he is bigger than you. I'm sorry, the, the men and women are different, and they're structurally different, and he's bigger, and he could just kill her if she was to stab him and not can not succeed right i'd say yeah all of that makes sense realistically mm -hmm. um, so i in that scenario that, but that's why i mean that's why i think he used the sex appeal angle with her for this episode like showing things because 
I don't know. It just. It I is. will say. I will say that's what I took from it. I, I just wish that if that was the case, uh, if we ever get a chance to, to uh, talk to Patricia Arquette or uh, or Tom Holland, the director of this episode, uh, what the intent was. But it seems like to me uh, that was the intent. Uh, yeah. She came up with the plan because mm -hmm. there are a lot of deliberate shots. That I think that could support this theory that she came up with the plan to uh, just convinced uh george that you know she's she's really that she's out of it or not mentally there i think i hit shot to the from the bottle and mm -hmm. pretty much get get this whole scenario where the wife will end up killing the husband i guess and then she kills the wife because it'll be easier because she's she's handicapped at the moment she's got mm -hmm. that uh she's got that uh that brace on her leg so i could see it being that way i just wish personally that they uh i guess uh cleaned it up a bit or made it a little bit more I would say I don't know more believable of certain events that could lead up to it yeah um, I think um, I, I, I was kind of hoping that it could I could have ended it differently it could have actually been an actual scarecrow that came to life somehow I think I would have preferred the scarecrow coming to life and killing George like after he tries to you know uh, take advantage of her again. Yeah, but because this is what but it's just saying because at least it would have made sense and us not believing the audience the audience not believing like yeah, so what's she talking about? She says a man that's a scarecrow. I mean we, we would have been on the same side as as George and Louisa thinking that she was fucking nuts. Mm hmm Or making something up. So I think I would have ended it differently. Um but anyways, I don't remember I don't remember when I rated Head thing from the grave, but I would say uh, this one is a little bit better than that, but not by a whole lot. I think there's just a lot there that you have to. There's there's hints there, but I feel like it's not ultimately super clear um, the outcome of that episode, whether it was planned or intended to happen that way. And if it was, it's just a bit very uh, lucrative string of events that would have to happen for it to. Uh, you know, to end the way it did. I think I, I think at least uh, it's more plausible than the, the the sacrifice events of him having to deal with knowing that his his girl that he killed the guy for is out there on the streets at night banging homeless people for two months. He, he, he just was there taking it. I don't know about that one. Yeah, now that this was a bit far -fetched. that's ex I, I, well, that one isn't as bad as the sacrifice. I mean, not as the sacrifice as that thing from the grave. I, I, the thing from the grave is actually much worse. Uh, again, even than this, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, no, nah. because I, I, thing from the grave. I think I gave it a one. If I, I think I said I'll give it a zero if I could, because <laughs> it, it, it really there's nothing good about it at all. Really, there isn't. And this, there is right. Tom Holland is a better director. He, you, he, it made you think more. I've thought more about this episode now than I ever will ever think about fucking the. The and thing from the grave. That's, that's pretty. That's pretty true. Yeah, yeah I think and we talked about this a lot more than. Yeah, that I thought I would. I didn't think I. Even <laughs> starting this podcast, I didn't think I was going to talk about this episode this much, right? Or this. The, 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 my, my, I think about it, and then the, the actors really delivered. The three of them. I really look. I right. could. I could. I believe it. All in all, yes, I could believe that these two people kidnapped this girl and holding her hostage. It's a very believable. This, this is like that's why I said reference Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Because that's what it felt like. It felt like I was peeking into a real scenario. And you go, oh, it can't be real. Right. I just saw a video of a girl that got rescued. She was uh, she was 22 years old. This guy beat the hell out of her and kept her in his attic. And they found her. And she had black eyes like a raccoon. Like big circles black around her eyes. And the cops rescued her. It could happen. It's probably happening right now. In this country. In America. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. So I actually believe that... that and, yeah, I think I'll give this. I I don't want to go higher. <laughs> no, uh, two point five, because even with the actors being good, right? And the, I'll give it a three. Two point five is a little too low. No, no, two point five is fine. I give it two point five. Uh, I think two yeah. two point five for me is where I'm gonna I'm gonna set on that one. It's yeah, definitely better than the thing from the grave. At least there's there's things here that happen that were interesting ideas. Uh, I think they could have been a bit more fleshed out. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, there are hints there that could that you could put the pieces together and kind of come to the conclusion of how you will, you would interpret the ending. The thing from the grave is 
very basic and straightforward. The dialogue is terrible. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. like we mentioned, just a waste of uh, good actors and mm -hmm. Gary Hatcher and Miguel Ferrer in this episode. If, if uh, uh, yeah, it was just not, not a great episode in general, no. No. Um, just because of all those things I had against it. So, I, yeah, I would say the same. Two and a half. I think... I ended up liking this more than I did the first time I watched it. So yeah, it's a little bit to see too. how our perspectives change when we rewatch it and maybe mm -hmm. catch some of the subtleties there. Yeah, really, honestly, I, I was I'm surprised. Two point, I was I would have given originally this a one or a zero. Like I don't think I give a zero, but a one because I never liked this episode. And now rewatching and looking for something there, I'm like, oh, it's really shot well. He, he uses the sex appeal a lot because. George is dreaming about her constantly, and they're constantly focusing mm -hmm. on. That's why I just said it was intentional that her, like they have already had somebody put put ice cubes around her, her, her areolas and her <laughs> nipples, because that's what they it, it, the role demanded. And so, give props to. Uh, yeah, it was it was much better, not great. I still think fucking Lover Come Hack to Me is the better than this. Uh, yeah, I gave it a two point five. You gave it a two point five. I think that's fair. That's more than fair necessarily because originally I was probably going in lower, but then rewatching it. Higher than I gave it originally for sure. Yeah, and then rewatching and finding what the, uh, seeing what the director actually did, and what he could accomplish with a story that's not all that you know, great, but it's not you know it's interesting. And it was, I don't know, as a kid watching it to be honest though, I didn't like it because I was always looking for the supernatural element that or something scary. And it really wasn't scary for me. <laughs> Obviously, for maybe horny men, they were <laughs> at the time when they first watched it. They were like, "Oh my god," you know. That like, was a pseudo thriller, but ultimately it was kind of a more of a yeah, kind of like this uh, nightmare for sinful some, movie, I yeah. guess, or something. But uh, you know, he did a good job. But um, yeah, guys, so that was that. Uh, you have any plugs you want to give out? Um, not not a whole lot. I mean, um, you can follow me on uh, on X on X. Yeah, that's mm. what they call it these days. Yeah, under uh, Sp Splinter Forty Seven. So I, any uh, updates I have, I guess, or just random tweets, they'll all go there. So you can check me out there. Yeah, you could go to X and find us at Creeps of Crip because one extra letter wouldn't let us have the Creeps of the Crypt. <laughs> So, because uh, it's fourteen, it's, uh, it's fifteen letters, and then uh, X only lets you have fourteen for your username. So, creeps of crypt at X or Ghost Crusaders, Ghost Crusader TV on X. Either one of those, you can follow us there. You'll see when we post these. You can find us on every streaming platform for podcasts out there. So go check us out there and leave us a review. It would really help us. You can also go to ghostcrusadersmerch.com. We have a shirt called American Creeps. It is an interesting shirt out there that I think you guys would enjoy. And I'm, I have an idea to do another shirt. I do have another idea for another shirt, but that will be later on. Uh, well, just check GhostCrusadersMerch.com and you'll see updates whenever we have new designs up there. And that really does help us out here. And you don't know why, because um, reaching out to these celebrities to do this is kind of costly. And we do plan to actually interview them because Lee Ehrenberg wanted to, he's like, hit, hit us up. I think I edited that out of the last podcast. But he was like, listen, hit me up. We, go, we could go long form. I really want to do this. Like he was excited to do it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of these people are yeah, because, yeah. because uh, these actors, are, they're being asked about something they're not really known for, right? And something they did that they enjoyed. Like Lee Ehrenberg enjoyed it. Leah Thompson She's like, I'm married. I'm, that's my husband. Me and my husband right, work together. Right. You know, that? so like she liked it too. She did the, the horrible accent, but you know what? It was, she was good in it besides that. I forgot how popular she was really, to be honest. Uh, Beats talking about Back to the Future for or, a million times. Or Howard the Duck. And if she or fucked the, the duck. duck. Yeah, those are the two things. But yeah, so uh, go to grocerycitymerch.com. Check us out there. I'm not going to promote the locals where I post, uh, I have a locals community too that I post uh, the podcast there, but uh, I'm not doing that yet because I don't have the time to edit, to give extra content out to people. So like, that's why we don't have a Patreon, even though I wouldn't use Patreon, I'd use locals instead because it's cheaper for people. They could give whatever they want, but I don't have the time to go, oh, 
You don't need time. Yes, we do. We talk about things that, <laughs> that nobody should hear <laughs> besides that. But then there's also editing and things that have to be done. I would love to give you just a raw, straight up audio that we're doing now. But it, it's not, there's, look, there's a lot of things that go into this that I can't do it necessarily right now. And we do want to, like, actually do uh, camera stuff later on, too. So there's a lot of stuff we're working on. But anyway, if you'd like to help us out, the best way you could do that is leaving us a review on iTunes or Spotify or heading on over to GhostWhoSaviesMerch.com and picking up a T-shirt. It does help. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So uh, I guess we will talk to you guys next time when we review The Ventriloquist Dummy starring Bobcat Gowith and Don Rickles. So... Talk to you guys next time. Peace. Peace out.